This is Mel Allen with the highlights of the 15th annual All-Star Game. Here's the National League heavy artillery, Johnny Mize, Walker Cooper, Ralph Kiner, and Stan Musial. The American League Cannoneers, Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, George Kell, and Lou Boudreau. Ford Frick, National League President. And Bert Schotten, who piloted the pennant-winning Brooklyn Club last season. Commissioner A.B. Chandler on the left, shaking hands with yours truly. The rival pilots, Leo DeRocher and Bucky Harris, wish each other luck before the game gets underway. Coaches Eddie Dyer and Chuck Dressen discuss the ground rules with the umpires. Then the American League team takes the field wearing their home uniforms. Richie Ashburn of the Phillies leads off for the Nationals. Starting pitcher for the Americans is Walter Masterson. Ashburn, the only rookie to be chosen for this game, opens up with an infield bounder that he beats out for a base hit. Next man up is Red Chain Dinks. With the Cardinals' second sacker at bat, the speedy Ashburn attempts to steal second. There he goes. He slides and he's safe. And now Red Shane Dean drives the grounder to McQuinn, who makes an unassisted put out at first base. Ashburn advances to third on the play. Stan Musial of the Cardinals at bat. In comes the pitch. Stan swings. It's a long drive deep into right center field. Going, going. It is gone. Up in there for a home run. Ashburn comes home ahead of Musial. And the National League is off to a two to nothing lead as Musial crosses home plate. Big John Myers of the Giants is the next batter. Masterson comes in with his pitch. Myers swings and lines it out over second in the center for a base hit. Next comes Eno Slaughter, Cardinal right fielder. And Masterson cuts loose with a wild pitch, and Myers goes down to second base. One out, Myers on second. Here's the delivery. Wide for ball four, and Slaughter walks. Andy Pafko of the Cubs up at bat now. In comes the pitch. Andy swings, hits the ball to Kelton, who steps on third to force Myers, but Pafko beats the throw to first. Two out, two on. Walker Cooper comes up. The giant catcher awaiting the delivery. Here it is. He swings as a ground ball to Kelton, who rifles it over to Gordon at second, forcing Pafko for the third out. And the Nationals take the field. In the bottom of the second inning, Hoot Evers of the Detroit Tigers comes to bat. Ralph Brank of the Dodgers now pitching for the Nationals. Here it is. It's swung on by Evers. It's a line drive going deep out left field, and it's up in there for a home run into the left field bleachers. This is only the second time in All-Star Game history that a batter has homered on his first trip to the plate in his first All-Star Game. Max West of the Nationals did it in 1940, but Hoot is the first American leaguer ever to accomplish this feat. And so at the end of the second inning, the score, Nationals 2, Americans 1. In the top of the third inning, Stan Musial comes to bat again. Musial's bat cracks off in his fists, but the drive goes sizzling in the center, giving Stan two for two. And by the way, does anybody want a slightly used bat? Now Myers drives one to Gordon at second, who flips over to Budrow. Lou fumbles, but recovers in time to force out Musial. In the bottom of the third, Mickey Vernon bats for Masterson, and he gets a ball outside for ball four. Next hitter is Pat Mullen, Tiger right fielder, and Pat draws another base on balls. As Henrik is set down on a third called strike, Vernon and Mullen execute a neat double steal. Runners on second and third, one out, Lou Budrow up. Here's the pitch. Lou swings. It's a fly ball going out into right field to Eno Slaughter. Mickey Vernon tags up at third and then scampers on in with a tying run of the ball game. 2-2. The Nationals Board of Strategy looks worried. In the top of the fourth, Gustine comes up to hit for Branca. Vic Rashi of the Yankees on the mound now for the Americans. Here's the pitch. Gustine swings and misses. Strike three and the score still stands tied up at 2 all. Johnny Schmitz, Cub left-hander, takes the mound for the Nationals in the last half of the fourth. With one away, Pitching to Kenny Keltner. Ken slams a hard ground to pass third on out of the left field to Mutual. Stan scoops it up, throws to second, holding Keltner to a single. And now the veteran Yankee first baseman George Quinn is up at the plate. Here's the pitch. McQuinn swings and lines it out in the center for a base hit. But Ashburn's peg holds Keltner on second. And now catcher Bertie Tebbets comes to the plate with runners on first and second. Schmidt's ready. Here's the pitch. It's ball four, and they're loaded up. Tebbets gets a base on balls. Keltner's over on third, McQuinn on second, Tebbets on first. They take their respective leads as the left-handers into the windup pitching to pitcher Vic Brashy, who swings and lines one over Pafko's head in the left field for the base hit. Keltner scores. McQuinn digs for the plate. He comes in to score. And Rashi pulls up at first with a two-run single to left, sending Tebbets to third. And now the Americans lead by a score of four to two. And the Nationals go into a huddle. Little conference around the mound, and that's going to be all for Johnny Schmitz. 
Coming in to pitch for the Nationals now is Johnny Sane. Joe DiMaggio now batting for Mullen. One out, two men on. Here's the pitch. DiMaggio swings it to line drive to left field, but right to Stan Musial. But after the catch, Bertie Tebbets comes on in to score the Americans' fifth run of the ball game. And now Rashi works carefully to protect his lead. But Richie Ashburn singles in the fifth inning for his second hit. Red Shane Deans coming to bat lifts a high fly, which is taken by Al Zarella out in short right center. Stan Musial is coming up now. Swings and misses. Strike three. With Stevens leading off in the bottom of the fifth inning, Johnny Sane thrills the crowd as Junior swings and misses for the third strike. Bobby Doerr goes down swinging, and Hoot Devers goes out on a third called strike. In the top of the sixth, Boston's Bob Elliott up. He lashes out and singles to left field. Phil Macy of Boston now catching in place of Cooper comes to bat. The stretch checking the runner. Here it is. It's swung on. There's another line drive out in the left field and it's in there for the base hit and there are runners on first and second for the Nationals. That brings to bat Buddy Kerr of the New York Giants who's in it short for Reese. Buddy dribbles a roller down toward Keltner. Ken picks the ball up throws Buddy out at first but Elliott and Macy advance a base each. Waitkus of the Cubs comes to bat for Sane as rain threatens. Randy walks Waitkus to load the bases. Now it's Waitkus on first, Macy on second, and Elliott on third. The score five to two in favor of the Americans. And the next batter is Richie Ashman, who already has two hits. Vic Rashi getting ready to work. In comes the pitch. And it's in there for a strike. Rashi comes in with the next one. Very wide for ball one. And Bob Elliott takes a lead off third base. Again, a fast one past Ashman for strike two. Rashi throws and it's in there for call strike three. Ewell Blackwell the Cincinnati sidearm specialist now pitching for the Nationals throwing to George McQuinn who slaps a blooper in the short left for a single. Bertie Tebbets up there down the second goes McQuinn and he's in there safely with a stolen base. Umpire Bill Stewart calls him out then safe and Kerr gives Stewart an argument but he says out. Bill says safe again Buddy says out again Bill says safe Buddy insists out umpire Bill repeats safe so he's safe at the plate Bertie Tebbets is out on a third call strike he questions umpire Beans Reardon's decision but Beans won't have any part of it and Bertie just gets nowhere don't these umpires ever lose with two out Boston's Ted Williams bats for Rashi Ted fouls one off for strike one Blackwell works very cautiously and Williams draws a base on balls. Al Zarilla of the St. Louis Browns now batting. Here's the pitch. Zarilla pokes out a bounder to Shane Deans who flips it to Kerr, forcing pinch runner Newhauser and retiring the side. Rain drizzles down on the scoreless seventh and eighth innings. And finally, top of the ninth with two outs, Stan Mutual up at the plate. Here's the pitch. He swings. It's a ground ball hit down toward Bobby Doerr. Doerr up with it over to McQuinn, and that's the ball game. Final score, American Nationals 2. again it was all star time so let's go to Shide Park in Philadelphia and join over 32,000 fans who braved the threatening rain swept skies for baseball's greatest show. Bobby Shantz, Kurt Simmons, Vic Rashi and Sal Magley were just a few of the stars who were ready to perform. Casey Stengel the American League manager had a multitude of top-notch performers. Hank Bauer on the left and Mickey Mantle. Big Ed Robinson of the Chicago White Sox and the Boston Red Sox Dom DiMaggio. Flash bulbs exploded when Lorraine Day, the National League's chief supporter, turned on her winning smile. Why shouldn't she? For hubby Leo DeRocha, the manager of the National League All-Stars, could also boast a roster of great names. On the left, Kurt Simmons and Sal Magley, and Whitey Lockman, the league's top first sacker, were just a few. The umpires and managers straightened out the ground rules, so let's get on with the game. In the first inning, Don DiMaggio, leading off for the American Leaguers, worked the Phil's Kurt Simmons for a free ticket.
But Simmons bore down, and the Yankees' Hank Bauer went down swinging. Cleveland's Dale Mitchell was next, and he too went down by way of the strikeout route. Cleanup hitter Al Rosen of the Indians stepped in and drove a grounder to shortstop Hamner, who tossed to Robinson for the force on DiMaggio, and the side was retired. With one away in the bottom of the first, the National League's Jackie Robinson on the first pitch sends a mighty drive into the upper left field stands to send the senior circuit team into an early one to nothing lead. This was also Jackie's first home run in an all-star game. That was all the scoring until the top of the fourth. And then with Bob Rush on the mound for the Nationals, Minnie Minoso bangs the first pitch down the right field line and tears around first and into second with a ringing double. Al Rosen came up. And on a three and two pitch, Rush drew low and Rosen was on with a walk. After Yogi Berra made the first out, Big Ed Robinson came up and blasted a single into right field to send Minoso scampering home with the first run for the American League. With Robinson on first and Rosen on third, Bobby Avila came to bat and slapped a hard single off of Jackie Robinson's glove, and Rosen came home with the second tally to put the American League out front, two to one. With two on, Scooter Rizzuto banged a grounder to short, and after slipping on the turf, Rizzuto became an easy victim of the double play, Hamner to Robinson to Lockman, to end the inning. In the last of the fourth with one away, Bob Lemon nipped Stam Musial with his first pitch, and the Cardinal center fielder was on first. Slugger Hank Sauer then leveled his big bat and sent the ball careening over the left center field roof for a mighty 430-foot home run that sent the National League All-Stars back into a 3-2 lead. This was Hank's first circuit smash in all-star competition, and it proved to be a mighty important blast. The American Leaguers failed to score in the top of the fifth, and then the partisan crowd cheered wildly as the A's little Bobby Shantz towed the rubber. What happened? Well, Whitey Lockman swung and missed, fouled one off, drew two balls, and then watched a fast ball for strike three. Next came Jackie Robinson. Strike swinging, ball one, ball two, called strike, and a swing and a miss and a change-up curve. Stan Musial stepped in next and swung in vain on Bobby's first pitch. Musial then fouled one off to right, and the next chance toss was a fast one for a call. Third strike. The 26-year-old, 5-foot, 7-inch, 145-pound Mighty Atom had given the fans their biggest thrill by striking out the side on only 13 pitches. With the National League in front of two, the Reigns came to halt the Classic after five innings and a wet but happy throng of fans trooped home. Baseball's mid-season spectacle, the 22nd All-Star Game, the answer to every manager's dreams, will be staged for the first time in the national pastime's most baseball-happy town, Milwaukee. The team selected by the fans will meet at Milwaukee County Stadium, which has a seating capacity of 43,000 plus. It measures 315 feet down the left field line, 402 feet to dead center, and 310 feet to the right field fence. The measurements are ideally suited for pole hitters. National League manager Leo DeRocher of the world champion New York Giants hopes to put the senior circuit back in the win column. One of his big problems is the condition of catcher Roy Campanella's injured knee, but the Brooklyn Dodger ace says he'll be ready for action. Powerful Ted Kluzewski of the Cincinnati Redlegs will hold down the National League first base post. Big Clue is one of baseball's leading home run hitters. All-time great Stan the Man Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals will spell Kluzewski at first base. Shown legging out a round tripper, Stan was the starting right fielder in last year's Classic, 
which attests to the all-round value of Stan, six times the National League batting champion. Red Shane Deanst of the St. Louis Cardinals will open at second base for the National League. Red will be the only switch hitter in the DeRocher starting lineup. Ernie Banks of the Chicago Cubs, a newcomer to all-star competition, will start at shortstop. Ernie's timely stick work has been a major asset to the Cubs this season. Long ball hitting Eddie Matthews of the host Milwaukee Braves will cover third base. 23-year-old Ed adds power to the National League lineup. Playing on his home diamond, Eddie will be a dangerous man for American League pitchers. Philadelphia's Del Ennis will be in left field for the senior circuit all-stars. Here, Dell singles to score teammate Bobby Morgan as he adds another RBI to his bulging total. New York's Whitey Lockman, who finished second best in the left fielder balloting, will also be available for left field duty. The Duke of Flatbush, Brooklyn's Duke Snyder, will be in center field. Shown belting a double to drive in a run, Snyder leads the majors in RBIs. Duke should find that short Milwaukee right field wall to his liking. Philadelphia's Richie Ashburn, the National League's leading hitter, will be on hand for pinch hitting chores. Don Mueller of the New York Giants will be in right field for the National League. Don has been hitting well over 300 all year, and he wants to help his boss man, Leo DeRocher, to a victory. In the American League, Cleveland's Al Lopez will be making his first all-star managerial appearance, and he hopes to make it a winning one. The American League catcher will be New York Yankee receiver Yogi Berra. Here, Yogi belts a home run against Washington. Yogi is no stranger to dream team play, for this will be his eighth all-star game. Helping Yogi with the catching will be expert receiver Sherman Lawler of the Chicago White Sox. Washington will be represented by two-time American League batting king Mickey Vernon, who will man first base. Mickey blasts a two-run home run in a recent game at New York. Always a good hitter, Vernon is one of the best hit and run men in the majors today. The hustling Nellie Fox of the Chicago White Sox will be stationed at second base. At his best, when robbing enemy hitters of base hits, Nelly drove in the winning runs in last year's dream game. Starting at the shortstop position will be Detroit's Harvey Keene, one of the most promising young players in baseball. Keene lashes one of his patented singles as he tries for his third 200-hit season in a row. Another Chicagoan, Chico Carrasquel, will aid Keene with the shortstop duties. This will be the fourth all-star game for the fancy fielding Venezuelan. Jim Finnegan of Kansas City, one of the major's top rookies last year, will cover third base. A leading light in the athletics' recent surge, Jim bangs a single to center to enable Vic Power to slide in safely with an important athletics run. The great Ted Williams of the Boston Red Sox will patrol the left field sector. Ted gained fame in many all-star battles of yesteryear. Maybe he'll do it again. In center field will be New York's Mickey Mantle, shown lashing a single. He'll lend his switch hitting power to the junior circuit squad. Detroit's number six, the sensational bonus baby Al Kaline is in right field. K-Line is the American League's leading batsman. Both squads are ready for the cry, play ball. Odds mean nothing in this, the game of games. But we pick the National League on the basis of a power-packed lineup 
and superior pitching to win the July 12th All-Star Classic. nation fans flock to Milwaukee for the 22nd All-Star Game to be played on this sun-splashed afternoon of July 12th in Milwaukee's famed County Stadium, home of the Braves. This is baseball's glitter game, matching the greatest stars of the American and National League. There's a maximum of power and skill represented in the rival squads of 1955. Which will prevail, hitting or pitching? We'll see. The American League leads in the series 13 games to eight, but the Nationals have won four of the last five. Leo DeRocher of the Giants and Al Lopez of the Indians, World Series rivals in 1954, again come to grips as managers of these high-powered teams. Dan Musier of the Cardinals in his 12th All-Star game, a record, chats with Mickey Vernon, two-time winner of the American League batting crown. It will be the 11th All-Star match for Ted Williams of the Red Sox. The third for Cincinnati's strong boy, Ted Klozuski. Bob Turley, Whitey Ford, Mickey Mantle, and Yogi Berra give the Yankees their usual large representation in the fans' dream game. Mantle and Berra were elected on the American League starting team by vote of the fans. Rivals during the season, Frank Sullivan of the Red Sox and Whitey Ford of the Yankees with little Nellie Fox of the White Sox. They are all pals today. Duke Schneider, the Dodgers fleet center fielder and slugger, is ready for his fifth All-Star game. Power hitter Eddie Matthews will start at third base in his home park for the Nationals. Robin Roberts, who will be an All-Star starting pitcher for the fifth time is here with Stan Lopata, also of the Phillies and one of today's catchers. Now they're all set for this 22nd All-Star Classic. Harvey Keene of the Tigers takes a strike on Roberts' first pitch, then drives a single to left. Drops a single into right center. And Keene dashes to third. With Ted Williams at the plate, Keene scores and Fox takes second on a wild pitch, giving the American Leaguers a quick lead. Roberts loses control and Williams walks. Now Roberts is in trouble with Mantle at the plate. And there it goes. A tremendous home run over the center field screen. Mickey scores behind Fox and Williams, giving the American Leaguers a commanding four to nothing lead. Mantle's homer will go down as one of the longest in all-star competition. Red Shane Deach of the Cardinals leads off in the national half of the first inning with a single to right center on Billy Pierce's first pitch. With the Phillies' Del Ennis at bat, Shane Deach breaks the second, but is thrown out, Terror to Fox. That's the way it stands until the American League third, when Ted Williams wraps Robin Roberts for a single to right center. Mickey 
Anthony Hennel flies to Schneider, and Williams holds first. Terra grounds into a double play. Brzezuski to Banks to Roberts, covering first to end the inning. The American League four, the National League nothing after two and one half innings. Chicago's Ernie Banks strikes out. Milwaukee's Del Candle with a count of three and two flies to L. Kaline in right field. Pittsburgh's Frank Thomas batting for Robin Roberts pops to Mickey Vernon. And Billy Pierce has pitched three straight shutout innings. The American League is still in front, four to nothing. With Harvey Haddix of the St. Louis Cards on the hill in the fifth inning, Harvey Keene opens the inning by grounding out Matthews to Krasuski. Nellie Fox is the next hitter. He slaps one off the pitcher's glove, but Shane Deeds at second base throws him out at first. Ted Williams rounds out. Pitcher to first to end the inning, and the score is four to nothing after four and one half innings. The American League added one more in the sixth for a five to nothing lead. With one on and two out in the American seventh, Williams belts a long one. What Willie Mays races back and hauls down the drive, robbing Ted of a home run. The score, it's still five to nothing. With Whitey Ford in the mound, Mays opens the national seventh with a single to left. Big Ted Kluzewski lines to Mantle. And Mickey tries to double Mays at first. Mantle takes Ransom Jackson flying short right center. Bringing up Hank Aaron, the brave, sensational young outfielder. Aaron walks and Mays goes to second. Johnny Logan, the brave shortstop. Drops a single and short right. Scoring Mays for the Nationals first run and putting Aaron on third. Mayo Smith, the Phillies manager, coaching at third, gives encouragement to Stan Lopata, batting for Smokey Burgess. It looks like the inning's over, but Chico Carascale boots Lopata's grounder, Aaron scoring, and Logan moving to second. Cubs Gene Baker bats to Newcomb and flies to Mantle. Third put out by Mickey in the inning. The Nationals trail now, five to two. With two away in the National League's eighth, Mays lines a single to right field. Lazuski follows with a single to the same area, and Mays gallops to third. Jackson punches a single to right, and Mays scores. Lazuski pulling up at second. Scores five to three, and the partisan crowd whoops it up. The tying runs are on. 
Frank Sullivan of the Red Sox comes in to pitch. And Aaron greets him with a single to right, scoring Klazuski. And when Al Rosen draws an error on Al Kaline's throw past third, Jackson scores to tie up the ball game five and five. Aaron takes second on the play. And listen to that crowd now. The inning's over when Pariscale pegs out Logan. So it's five to five at the end of the eighth. Now the game's in extra inning. Only the second one in all-star history. With Joe Nuxall pitching. Pariscale flies to Mays at the start of the 11th inning. Cleveland's Bobby Avila draws a base on balls. Cincinnati left-hander retires Al Smith on a call third strike. But Mantle singles past Jackson and Avila takes second with a lead run. Barra sends Red Shondi back of second for his grounder. And on the off balance throw to Kozuski at first base, umpire Dusty Bodges calls out Yogi. And Barra doesn't like the decision one bit. That's all for the Americans in the 11. It's still 5 to 5 when Long Gene Conley of the Braves faces the American Leaguers at the beginning of the 12th inning. Mickey Vernon has no better luck, missing a third strike. Conley's tricky delivery is too much for Rosen, and Long Jean has three straight strikeouts. The crowd gives Conley a terrific ovation. Dan Musial is first up for the Nationals in their half of the 12th. Here comes Sullivan's first pitch. And there it goes. A home run over the right field screen. It's the fourth all-star homer in Musial's career. And by far the most important. The National League wins an uphill battle six to five. The National League now has won five of the last six of these midsummer spectacles. Musial's teammates gather at the plate to greet the hero. The St. Louis Cardinals star is jubilant over the victory. And 45,314 spectators have seen a never-to-be-forgotten long afternoon of baseball. Just a small portion of the many millions of fans who watch our national game of baseball every year. See a ball game often. Follow your local team. It's fun for the entire family.